Hi, I'm Srinidhi from Decibels Lab. I'll be demonstrating on VMS integration with battery module and VMS live functionality. First, let us look at VMS integration here. You can see this is a 13S 30 amps BMS, smart BMS. When you talk about BMS configuration, we have two important things series connection and max discharge current it can take. So this one is a 13S which means 48 volts. You can see, look at the battery module. This is in 13 in series and 4 in parallel. The cells used are 2.6 AH and 3.7 volts. So it's around 48 volts, 10 AH capacity. When you talk about the uh, connection with the B uh, BMS with the battery module, you can see there is something called as B negative. There is nothing but battery negative. This directly goes into the negative terminal of the battery. Then we have C minus, which is nothing but charge negative, which will also be a discharge negative. Then we have UART and RS485 for communication purpose. Here you can see the communication module is here which will convert RS485 to directly to the USB which you can connect to your laptop. Then the main wiring comes here which connects all the series of the battery module. It starts from negative wire which is known as VC0 which will directly the black wire which will directly connect to the negative terminal. So total we have 14 wires out of which 12 are white, one is negative, one is positive which is in red color. So first you connect to the negative terminal then in continuation you connect all the white wires which you can see here it has been already connected and here. Then at last you connect the red wire to the positive terminal. So this is how the wiring connection is. Here you can see the thermal uh, that is another thermistor which will uh, monitor your temperature. This will be actually placed inside the battery module. Some BMS has uh, overall board temperature sensor also and external more than 2 or 3 uh, temperature sensors. So this is the terminal which is used for discharge also for charging. In some uh, BMS we can connect uh, extra wire for a charge separate and discharge separate. Now let us look at BMS integration with a vehicle in a battery module. So this is our test vehicle at decibels. You can look at the battery module which are placed in the test vehicle. So this is a 48 volts, 29 AH battery. And we have used 13S 40 amps BMS with it. And this is the wire for the communication. This is the communication block. From here you get a USB connection. You can see in the battery module again we have one for charging which is connected at the ahead front for charging port and another for discharging which is directly connected to the load that is motor. Then we have two wires B minus which will go directly into the negative turn uh, of the battery pack. Then we have taken positive terminal uh, positive wire directly from the positive terminal of the battery module. These are the 13, uh, 14 wires in which uh, 13 wires are directly connected for the 13th S uh, connection, series connection in the battery room. Another one uh, wire is for the positive terminal. Now let us look at the software part of the BMS, smart BMS. So we have integrated the overall battery module with the smart BMS and it is integrated to the vehicle, test vehicle. Now we have connected to the our laptop. Let us look at the what all the functionality it does and what all the changes we can do. So here you can see this is the software window which you can see. How to connect it? Just connect the USB connection here through the communication block. Then just go to the COM. Click on the COM port. Automatically it will select the COM port which has been connected, press OK, then you give start, go to the settings, you re press read emperor. It reads whatever data or parameters which has been set for the particular BMS module. You can see reading data is successful. If you go back to the pack information window, it will give you the current status of the whole battery pack. The module is 13S 40 amps, which you see, which you saw already. So when you talk about the pack information, basically you have number of series connection, so which is 13. So you can see 13 connections here. 
then when you, you can see directly the voltage in series so there are four, four uh, cells in the parallel or um, sorry uh, 10 cells in the parallel you can see so all the voltage of the uh, in that particular line in series 1 the voltage is seen you can see for all the different 13 then we have something called balance function if by chance any old uh, cell voltage is below the parameter which we have set then you can see on and off function of the balance then we have temperature sensor one temperature sensor is inside the battery module another temperature sensor is of the BMS module then we have overall information about the pack volume which is 49.8 right now 49.8 volts then we have current right now it's zero because either it's neither it's discharging nor charging then we have average cell voltage then you can see the maximum cell voltage minimum cell voltage different between the voltage uh, cell voltages then we have cycle count cycle count is nothing but our life cycles or a life cycle for a cell is complete discharge and charge so that's called a one life cycle so you can also calculate the state of health using smart beams then we have full charge what is the full charge as i said it's a 29 ah battery pack so that's the full capacity charge then we have remaining capacity we also have the state remaining uh, state of charge then we have two mosfet here one is for charge one is for discharge on the right hand side right hand side corner you can see these are all the window for the any warning symbol maybe cell over uh, over voltage protection charge over voltage uh, charge protection discharge protection if anything malfunction is detected in a bms you can see a warning window here Now let us go to settings if you look at the settings here you can see a basic parameter setting so these are the basic parameter any bms would have to do that is cop that is nothing but cell over voltage protection then we have cell under voltage protection then we have pack over voltage protection then we have pack under voltage protection then we also have charge over temperature charge under temperature discharge over temperature discharge under temperature at last charge over current protection and discharge over current protection on the right hand side you can see that something a volume called release release is nothing but when these peak values are attained by our battery module at certain time then uh, the whole uh, circuit will terminate or i would say deactivate for that moment then it will reactivate only when these release values are attained by the whole uh, bms then we have something called as delay so these delay seconds can be set according to safety standards so the according to these delay standards uh, delay seconds it will take a time of one second or 10 second whatever values we have been initiated in this parameter setting then after the seconds are over it rechecks the whole circuit and activates or deactivates according to the parameters set according to these values are only set according to cell data sheet i repeat again these values are only set according to cell data sheet which are used in the battery module the cell data sheet will provide you the what is the max charge it can take what is the max discharge voltage it can take and at what temperature we can charge it maximum what is what temperature we can discharge it and also what is the maximum current it can discharge for an example i have just given one amps as charge and discharge as one amps just to show you that how the whole cut off, cut off happens in the pms now let us see first for charging you can see on the current window there is 4 amps going in which is above the parameters we have set you will see suddenly there is a charge MOSFET getting off which is in grey colour so you could see the charge MOSFET from green it went to grey which was in on state suddenly it went for off state that was due to maximum amount of current was passing according to the parameter set so we had set 1 amps and it took 4 amps from the charger so uh, charger was providing 4 amps so which was above the limit so you can see that this is the way how it protects while charging i'll show you again so we are getting 4 amps 
you can see here on this window charge over current protection yeah you, you, you can see this red blinking light right which means that a warning given to it it takes some time it rechecks the whole circuit again see it's rechecking it's going above 4 amps it will deactivate the whole system okay so this was about the charging now, now let us look at the discharging you can see our test vehicle speedometer it's in zero the vehicle is in on i start giving acceleration you can look at the window now current is in zero as soon as i give acceleration it is going up to minus 1.7 and it's getting deactivated why is it negative symbol it is discharging current you can see the discharge mosfet will get off you can see from red uh, from the sorry from green it's going for gray and you can see a warning symbol here yeah you can see right so this is how basically the basic protection of a bms work then we have some ad advanced features like cell calibration for cell balancing and so on you can see uh, this is the function for balancing and charge balance there are two types of balance uh, one is for uh, balancing while static another one is static and discharge and on the balance is for while charging so this particular bms uses passive balancing and here are the um, window for the capacity configuration so guys this was about the bms integration with the battery module and uh, live demonstration of bms functionality if you want to learn further on how all this works in practically and also test the discharge current and charge current while riding the vehicle you can subscribe to decibels lab and you can also come to our decibels lab office where we have programs for all practical learning a complete master course regarding this thank you